Hello humans. I'm sick, but I wanted to talk about something really quick uh, that I was thinking about last night. This is a funny story about empathy in games. So my partner and I were looking over some uh, new video games that came out this year, last night. Um, and we were looking at Red Dead Redemption, the Spider-Man one, um, Monster Hunter, and uh, the new Kratos God of War one with his son. Um, and out of all of those, only one of them was snake positive. So what do I mean by that? Well, like in most of these video games, they're like fantasy people going to fight monsters, right? I mean, three out of four of those games. The other one is a Western that's racist and sexist. So, you know, like all Westerns are, every Western is terrible, not even Westworld gets it right. And the monsters inevitably, you know, look kind of like reptiles. They are, you know, snakes or lizards um, or, or bestial in some way, you know, animalistic. And they're just out there doing their thing, whatever their thing is, and this asshole who you are playing comes along and has to kill it, you know? A metaphor. And so in Kratos, I'm like, okay, he's killing these demons. He's like going after these godlike, you know, epic monsters, yada yada, whatever. We've been telling this story for thousands of years and it's less relevant today than it ever was. And then at the end of the trailer, he comes upon the world serpent and I'm like, oh God, it's a snake. Are they gonna murder the snake in some terrible way? And, <laughs> and it actually ends up that the snake is like talking to them and he asks his son, what is it saying? And his son is like, it wants to help us. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the only snake positive trailer out of all these trailers for video games where like, Beasts and, and reptiles and snakes are just being murdered and slaughtered for no reason. And it's funny because I was asking my partner last night, you know, what's the point of retelling this story? Like the ancient story of, you know, man, man in particular is greater than beast and beast must be slaughtered in order for man to live victoriously or something. It's absurd. <laughs> like, we don't live in a world where we're threatened by animals anymore. We're the threatening animal. Why are we still telling this basic, ridiculous, stupid story? It's a very post-colonial. And like, when I was younger, I used to accept this narrative. Like, I was really into ancient mythology. I still am. Like, I love mythology bullshit. And, you know, the story of, uh, it's like just a common story of like people trying to survive in a dangerous world, you know? Um, and I think you know, it's just like, you know, I, I, would, I would like kill thousands of things in video games <laughs> without even thinking about it. It was just normal. And we do that in role playing games too. We just kill stuff. But like, what is that saying about us, you know? That it's just okay to kill stuff, it's fine. It's just what we do, it's just what we need to do to live, right? The answer is no. The answer is no, we don't need to kill things to live anymore. I mean, we have smarter, better ways of living and most of our lives are so removed from nature that we don't even remember or know what animals are anymore and we have to go to a zoo to look at them. It's absurd. And like, I was watching these shorts by Neil Blom Blomkamp on um, Amazon, I think, the other night. And he's the one who did District 9, which was a revolutionary sci-fi at the time. There's some interesting South African race um, issues going on in that movie, both good and bad. Uh, and and then this, these shorts, you know, it's like Sigourney Weaver's in these fucking shorts. And... Uh, it, they're pretty good, like the graphics are interesting, you know, but it's like goddamn aliens coming to colonize humanity again, like aliens being a metaphor for the other that we don't trust or for, um, you know, scary animals we don't understand. And these aliens looked like snakes, like they had like hypnotizing eyes, it was one of their powers and they like hooded up like a cobra. And they were just being violently <laughs> slaughtered in these shorts. Like, it was graphic and gruesome, which, like, I don't mind graphic, gruesome shit, but, like, this was, like, upsetting to me because I couldn't remove the image of my pet snakes.
from this connect, to, you know, from this alien. Like they just looked, they looked like my snakes who were adorable and cute. And I like had to turn it off. I can't, I like can't watch this stuff anymore. Now that I have two adorable pet snakes, I can't help but watch like, see in sci-fi, like how many villainous characters are like reptiles and snakes. It's like, it's like the same, I'm not gonna make analogies. It's just like, it's upsetting. <laughs> so I've been vegan for over a year and uh, I got my snakes a little bit before that and I learned this interesting statistic that one of the two most popular reasons people go vegan is because they get an exotic animal. Um, the other one is uh, for health reasons, you know, if they are, if people are experiencing some kind of health reason, they need to change their diet so they go vegan. Um, but it's interesting because I got a snake, I got a snake, and then within a year, I was vegan. But it was also because of health issues from fibromyalgia. So, my brain is hackable, apparently. <laughs> And it's interesting because the reason why is because you asso your brain associates, you know, oh, a snake is a taboo animal or any exotic animal is a taboo animal to have in our culture. Um, and I love this taboo animal. So why am I not loving these other taboo animals? Like, why am I eating them? And then your brain does this thing where it connects stuff and suddenly, I'm not eating animals anymore. There's more reasons than that I've decided to stay vegan and probably those two things influenced me going vegan as well as, as having many friends and seeing um, like cultural movements towards uh, you know conservation and uh, climate change where vegan has a huge impact on that, right? But now I'm also vegan because of empathy. Like empathy is a huge thing. Um, and it's interesting to see those connections. Like, I have a snake as a pet. I have more empathy, empathy for snakes. I hate watching any kind of uh, media where snakes are villains or are killed. Uh, and so now I, you know, a lot of traditional media I thought was cool is not cool. And, <laughs> and you know, I have more empathy for beasts and animals in general, including mythical monsters in video games. Interesting brain thing. Anyway, I have more empathy for snakes, which means I have more empathy for creatures who are usually villainized in our games. And, you know, that's not like a new idea for me, being a queer, you know, genderqueer person who are often villainized as well. Uh, for similar reasons, right? Because it's taboo in our culture. So, I don't know. Moral of my rant, who, who are you designing empathy for in your games? Like, is it, who, who's the villains, right? Like, is it the, the snakes? Is it the gay people? Uh, you know, why? Why are you doing that? Just why? Like, what if instead of Monster Hunter, it was monster friends, and you go out and find monsters and make friends with them and find ways to make the world a better place? <laughs> I don't know. We need to shift this narrative in general in our culture of uh, monsters and beasts and animals and things we don't understand and people we don't understand being the villains. Uh, because we're in a different place in our culture and our society now where we're responsible for these creatures. We're responsible for the continuing uh, existence of their habitats and of them in and of themselves. And the more we put out into the world that murdering animals and beasts is okay, the, m the harder it's gonna be to, to you know teach people how to conserve these lands and these animals around us. Like I think those things are connected. Uh, in our minds, right? In, in any small way. I, I just wish this narrative was different. Like, change, change the narrative. What's your favorite game, video game, or role-playing game, or otherwise, that subverts this narrative I'm talking about? Let me know down below in the comments. It'll bring a smile to my face. 
Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.